Hello, hello, hello. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we are so excited to bring tonight's event to you all. Another one of our Transaction and Talanoa events. Um, most of you already know um, this month is Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So with that said, tonight's event, we want to showcase one of the treasures of the Pacific Island, the Kingdom of Tonga, and one of the treasures found within the culture of Tonga, and that is the Lazy Identity. Uh, before moving forward, I'd like to introduce myself um, so that everyone is aware of who is talking. Uh, my name is Tepa Tasi Vaina. You can call me Tepa for short. Um, and I am the Community Engagement Manager here at Utopia Seattle. I identify as a trans woman of color, but most importantly, I identify as a Fafafine. The Fafafine identity to me is very important because it's a representation of everything that I am. It does not restrict me down to my gender identity, down to my sexual orientation, who I sleep with, or a part of my body. It's a totality of everything that makes me so wonderful. Um, and that includes my culture, that includes um, all cultural practices we have, that also includes the land that I'm from. Speaking of land, I want to take this time to pay our respects and acknowledge the traditional stewards of the land that we currently occupy. And so for us here at Utopia Seattle, Utopia Seattle navigates our programs and services on the land that, um, on the land of the Coast Salish Duwamish people. Um, and for everyone else tuning in from around the globe, I also want to take this time to invite you and ask you to pay your respects and to acknowledge the traditional stewards and the ancestors of the land that we are all currently occupying. Thank you. Uh, moving forward with our program, let's see. Um, tonight's program is a collaboration of two of our ongoing programs at Utopia Seattle. Utopia Seattle has several ongoing programs happening, you know, in physical spaces um, due to the times that we're in and um, the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've been restricted to hosting live events. Um, two of those important programs to us are Transaction and Talanoa. Um, a little bit about our Transaction support group. Transaction was created about, I want to say, in 2017. And this is just a space that was offered by Utopia, and we continue to offer it today to trans and gender diverse folks with lived experience in sex work. Um, we recognize that a big part of our community have lived experience in sex workers for whatever reason. But it's also important for us to recognize that sex workers are people like everyone else and they need access to resources like you all do. Utopia stands proud by our decision to make sure that we continue to offer that service and continue to offer that space where sex workers feel welcome, feel celebrated, and most of all, feel safe. Our next program I want to highlight is our Talanoa program. Talanoa in Pacific cultures uh, basically means to have dialogue, to have conversations. Utopia adopts the concept of Talanoa um, to highlight the stories of queer and trans Pacific Islanders everywhere. Our stories are always being told from a Westerner's point of view and from everyone else who is not us. And it's time for us to speak up and use our voices, use the power of our stories to inspire the rest of our community, to keep telling the world and set the record straight about who we are and the beauty of the totality of our identities. That is everything, including our Pacific Island cultures. Um, with that said, we have a very, very exciting program tonight. Tonight, you will be viewing with us the film Ladies in Waiting, filmed in the Kingdom of Toma. Right after that, you will also get to hear from the very amazing Joey Jolene Mataele, who is mostly featured in the film. Um, you'll also get a glimpse of Joey's life in the film. And um, we are so lucky and excited um, that we get to hear straight from Joey tonight. 
Um, I want to acknowledge our sponsors um, that make it possible for Utopia to continue providing our services and our programs, whether it's in person or virtually. And um, those sponsors are Seattle Foundation, Neighbor to Neighbor, Social Justice Fund, King County, Borealis Philanthropy, Group Health Foundation, Fund for Transgenerations, Third Wave Fund, Sex Workers Giving Circle, Pride Foundation, Seattle People's Fund, Prison Foundation, and Can't Give Me Culture. So without further ado, I am going to hand over the floor to my wonderful colleague, uh, Tweety Fatuesi, who is also a, our cultural community organizer, who will be introducing to you our amazing guest of tonight and um, introducing you our film. Um, I will see you all later. I hope you all enjoy our show tonight. Just make it quick, Tweety. Tala and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Tweety Fatuesi. I am the community organizer here with Utopia Seattle. Uh, my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm very thankful that you all are able to tune into our broadcast this evening to join us for um, an, an, an exciting film. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our special guest of honor, uh, Joey Jolene Mataele, uh, hails from the Kingdom of Tonga and has a range of experiences. Um, this involves the running of her own business. Um, she works as a professional singer, um, also as an entertainer and is an event planner who happens to be caring for three adopted children. Um, Joey has been an active pr promoter of HIV and AIDS awareness um, and is also an activist for LGBTIQ individuals in Tonga, as well as the South Pacific for over 30 plus years. Um, she is, this is where she uh, lives as a transgender lady, where she has witnessed firsthand the harassment and discrimination suffered by many LGBTIQs in the region. Jolene is the founder and director of the famously known Miss Galaxy pageant, um, which takes place in the Kingdom of Tonga. And here's where she's able to raise awareness and visibility to support our community. Currently, she works as the executive director of the Tonga Leiti Association, which is the only organization for all LGBTQ in Tonga and is the president and co-founder of Pacific Sexual Gender Diversity Network, which is the only regional network in the LGBTIQ in the Pacific. Quite the resume, or quite the introduction, but um, all of her great work just goes to show the amount of um, dedication that she has to her community. Um, at this time, I'd like you all to show some love in the comment section and help me invite Jolene Mataele to our program. In this humble of Ilaka to all, and of course, Hello Falama to all my sisters from Seattle. Um, as you all already know my name, and I don't need to introduce my name as more because it's such a long name and it won't cover the whole Pacific. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for having me, and um, thank you for making um, this. Um, will be available for everyone on this live broadcast. Well, we're very thankful that you're able to join us. I'm very privileged to be able to meet you online through a virtual platform. Um, regrettably, I'd wish it would be in person. Um, but how are you doing in your neck of the woods? Well, I'm actually stranded in, um, in Canberra, Australia. Um, on my way back from the Solomon Islands, I, I got here and by the time I arrived in Australia it was the both borders, the Tonga and of course New Zealand and Australia were were all locked in lockdown and I had to be put in isolation for 14 days. Um, and after that then I luckily I was able to um, I was able to be with um, one of our activists, feminist activists, um, trans activists, um, Emmanuel Brown, um, a well-known Australian or Samoan. 
um, a trans woman who lives here in Australia. And she, so I stayed with her at her house with her children um, for about uh, two weeks before I came here to my niece in Canberra. Everything's fine, but, uh, you know, you have worked so much doing, you know, dealing with issues and all sorts of things, you know, in your life for the past 30 years. Uh, however, um, when it really hits you on certain, on, uh, you know, on crisis like this, it's a total different matter altogether. You know, it hits you badly, you know, and your time difference is totally wrecked. Your mind, your whole being, your well-being, and your, you know, and everything just changes, you know. So I, I try and cope every day, you know, with the everyday routine and exercise a little bit and like eat healthier, mm -hmm. you know, no more, uh, you know, pali popo and all those things. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, it's, in a way, it works for me too because I'm not able to go to um, my favorite restaurants and eat out all the time like I'm used to. But um, home cooking has been very satisfying lately, um, and especially staying indoors. It's given me an opportunity to sort of um, do things that I haven't had time to do before. No, it's, that is so true. That is so true. And these social distancing, it's, you know, even when you come to, you know, uh, to relatives who want to visit you. Feels weird when you're trying to go like this with your elbow or, or standing away from each other. We're so used to the loving hug, kiss, you know. I, I look at the neighbors and I just hug, I don't care. <laughs> well, after spending 14 days in quarantine, I mean, I think you're, it's safe to assume that you've been cleared. So um, that, you know, we're happy that you're able to um, continue to stay safe and now that you're with your family it's important to keep practicing until all of this is over I mean we all have to stick together through these unprecedented times I um, mean it's very difficult especially when you can't embrace your loved ones or your friends um, and but social distancing is still an important thing to keep practicing that's right yeah I've been here for about two months going on three months now and um, you know I might as well apply for my permanent residence. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother is here too, and so she's, um, I mean, there's nothing she can do at this point. As an immigrant um, who's visiting the United States, she cannot travel to go back home. So we're considering doing the same, although I think she regrets um, she might miss home more so than, you know, spending time out here. But once the weather changes, she's desperate and ready to go back because she cannot handle the cold. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that I, I have learned about this, about this is, you know, the, the importance, you know, we we work on discrimination, on on stigma, on I mean social stigma and all that, and harassment and all that. But we never have time or in some of our projects, you know, that's why Talanoa is is such a powerful methodology to use. Because we never get to sit down properly and talk about our well-being, our self-care, the importance of self-care, and all those things, you know. We, we do things for other people, but we don't take care of ourselves. We don't have time to take care of ourselves, you know. And it, it, this is very, very important. This lockdown has really, really um, take you back to the importance of looking after yourself, you know, and prepare ahead for another crisis that comes and you're able to fund yourself, to care for yourself, you know, and, and care for your own family at the same time. Absolutely, which is why we're very fortunate to continue to hold it no matter what circumstances we're facing with um, this, with this pandemic. Um, and so we're happy to be able to invite you on and you know, take a have a have a meaningful discussion around uh, the discrimination and the social injustices that we as a community are facing. Um, with that in mind, I'd like to see if you would like to share um, an overview of the film before we begin um, our our broadcast. Okay. Um, thank you, Tweety. Um, the um, the 
the movie started when um, when the two producers and director, and I really thank them for this, Joe Wilson and, and Dean Hamer. Mm -hmm. um, they came to Tonga to introduce and to launch the, um, the Kubuhina film, because Kubuhina was one of our first, one of our uh, former Miss Galaxy winners, you know, Hinale, uh, Hinale Moana Wong from mm -hmm. Hawaii, mm -hmm. and she's one of the first trans that married a Tongan guy, you know, and brought him with her. Um, and um, when they came, we've always wanted to do something like this. You know, there's so much stories, even in, in, in the Pacific, you know, and it was like watching Cindy's movie, you know, last two weeks ago. Right. You know, and, and it really, it really, Cindy is so right about um, how we use these stories to tell, you know, how we use these methods to, to tell our stories because majority of our stories are reported to the police and they're not, they're never acted upon, you know, and some of the, the, the things that we go through in life are not even dealt with. You know, mm -hmm. so when when Joe and them came, then we asked, and we were we we're thinking we'll start with that. You know, they agreed they'll start with a short film. You know, and uh, do the lady ever. But then mm -hmm. they when they came, they were supposed to come back the following year in 2016, and that's when the march start. You know, for the going against the. Um, the convention for women, women's convention, you know, and the CEDAW convention. And so we had to stop everything. And we asked them to come and, and, and film the, uh, if they want to be part of the, the um, national consultation that we did. Mm -hmm. So it went from one event to the other, you know, and that's how we ended up with a major, with a, a main featured film. You know, and and it was really interesting, and I just thank God to that it really took out a lot of our decision makers to join. You know, I was able to reach out to some of our to the church leaders, church leaders, um, and most of our our NGO people to be in it. You know. Yeah. And having access to some of the events that was going on, you know, because so that's how really the, the movie came to be. Very exciting, which I know a lot of our viewers will be able to uh, have this opportunity to see how it all unfolds. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to take this time to prepare everyone. I hope you have your snacks, your treats, your drinks uh, ready. Um, we're about to kick back beginning of our broadcast. Um, in the meantime, prepare your questions. Jolene and I will be back at the end of the film to uh, conduct a little Q&A um, for all of you. Um, feel free to submit your questions into the chat box and our team will be working on the other end to get those over to Joey and I um, to discuss later at the end of the film. Good luck and enjoy the show, everybody. We'll see you at the end. Hi everyone, welcome back to um, the ending of our film. Um, I'd like to apologize um, for the technical issues, technical difficulties we've been experiencing um, with this broadcast. Um, we will try to um, pre re or replay the video over um, at a later time. I know it's difficult when we're all working from home and sort of navigating the online platform that we're utilizing to um, continue our work and continuing to carry out um, our programs um, through this space. Um, so I know a few, 
I know we've asked um, all of you at home who are watching to prepare some questions um, for Joey to come on and we'll have our Telenoa discussion. Um, at, at this time, I'd like to invite Jolene back to um, the screen to join me for a little bit of Q&A. Talk a little bit about her experience. While we wait for Joey to, oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Jolene, welcome back. It's not agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. Oh, very much. I think I've seen it about a hundred times already. <laughs> <laughs> a very interesting, um, documentary uh, sort of capturing all of you guys uh, lived experience back in the kingdom of Tonga, especially um, I think you had a moment, a personal moment very early on when you were um, talking about the relationship that you had with your family when you were coming out. Um, also, there was this, there was a moment <clears throat> there was a moment where Ava was discussing her story too and sharing a little bit about her relationship with her family, which was incredibly heart-wrenching personally for me to experience. Um, I was fortunate enough to um, have support along with my sibling who, um, not to put her out there, but is also trans. Um, so we were fortunate to have support around our gender identities and growing up in a family that was um, sort of supportive, but also being protective um, so that we wouldn't, I guess, experience the same harsh level of harshness that others have experienced. Um, but I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna ask you a little bit about the Leiti Association, um, if there's any updates, because I know that you guys were able to provide um, Ava with a scholarship to continue her education. Um, if you can talk a little bit or share a little bit about the organization's progress since the production of this documentary. Well, um, the association has really started uh, way back in 1992. That's when we started the, the association. And um, with the guidance of Mrs. Popilofoliaki, the founder. Mm. And when, um, but since we started the, and up to today, we have supplied a hundred, uh, sorry, we have a member of over 300 members. And most, and a lot of them have moved overseas. But they still support, you know, even though they're they moved overseas, they're still in support in, in you know, in certain ways to support the association and also running of the of the office. Mm -hmm. But we've been very fortunate enough that since we started up to today, we have supplied, we have given out sixty two um, scholarships. And um, as of this year, that will be that would that would give us uh, seventy-two scholarships altogether that we've given out. And and one of those scholarships was that one of that that uh, that ever got, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, um, she has graduated, and now she's working for the office as one of our youth uh, advocators there on HIV 
and SBI. And, um, but one thing that we see that, uh, that works, um, with this, this uh, scholarship is we're able not to just focus on LGBT people. We, you know, we're able to, to give away at least four of the 10 that we give out um, uh, the last four years to straight students who want to complete their education, okay? So we give it out and we put it out on our page for application on Facebook and that for application. So we, we, we see a lot of at the same time we're, we're doing that, we're sort of giving back to the, to the community, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and it feels good, you know, to be able to do that. At the same time, we are getting respect from those families, you know? Um, there, are, there were families that we didn't even get to talk to each other at all until this happened. And, you know, um, and they finally turn around and change their attitudes and everything, you know. But um, one thing that I'm, I'm very pleased to say that even though we don't have um, two or three extra um, paid staff in the office, the, we seem to manage. We seem to be managing well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Miracles and love from everyone, you know. Um, right. It's great that you guys have been able to sort of grow your organization has experienced a potential growth with the 300 members that you now have, um, especially to have a lot of support from um, ladies who have left the island and are continuing to support the organization from out here. Um, in addition to that, I wanna I wanted to ask you how you feel about the film's portrayal of Lathis in the entirety of the gender identity. Um, if there's also anything that you would change about the film, what would that be and why, or why, what, I guess, yeah, what would that be? I don't think if there's anything that, um, that I, I don't see anything that would, that I would like to change on the film, you know? I want to see the continuance of the film, you know, mm -hmm. like a part two of this. You right. Know? And um, to see, it was like when I was watching Cindy's movie two weeks ago, it would be nice to see the, what has been progress from there, you know, so where the, the Samoa Papapina is now, because they're well stand, you know, um, uh, well protected and well um, supported. Yeah, and supported. You know? Yeah, it's nice to see a part of the Yeah, and especially having the Prime Minister as their patron, that's, you know, that's a milestone. Mm -hmm. um, but um, for, for me personally, I would like to see the change that has come into the the nation, you know, um, right. and how the the, the ladies has has um, actually moved from hiding themselves now, I mean, from 30 years ago, to where we are now, you know, mm -hmm. everybody has got the the freedom to wear lipstick publicly, wear dresses publicly, and and the jobs that they have, they have achieved, you know, the um, um, where the where the association stands in within the government and also the NGOs, you know, um, and the recognition is there. However, we still face from here and there quite a few. Um, obstacles from from um, from some of our so-called allies you know 
you know what I'm saying? They do agree on certain things, but when it comes to our own choice, you know, especially with the faith leaders, you know, mm-hmm. some faith leaders still don't want to come and sit with us. But fortunately, not that's, yeah. that's similar to what I experienced watching um, Cindy's film as well, is that, you know, it, when it comes to Fafa Fines and Lady's, um, people are selective about accepting a certain part of us um, versus accepting us as, us as a whole individual person. Um, exactly. they want to stick, you know, they want to have that division of the gender norm between male and female that you can only be one or the other and that there's no other way um, to be. But what for this movie or this documentary's case is um, to impose religious beliefs. Mm. No, that's true. And, and, and I think that the, the worst thing about it, because we don't have mm-hmm. abuse from, from our gang back at home, mm-hmm. you know, from our people at home. It's actually the people that live overseas, the Tongans that live overseas, that we get all the bull crap from, you mm. know. And um, it's, I just close my ears to that. I, I don't bother listening to negativity, you know. Gone are the years of listening and hardening, you know, hardening, um, you're trying to harden yourself to cope with that, you know. Um, I have, you know, I've reached this 56 years and I need beauty care for myself. You know, I don't need to listen to all that, you know, excuse my, that's a bullshit, but, um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's something that, something that I've learned in life is to think positive always, you know. Right. And I have a lot of love. I, I want to see that love, care, and support, you know, continuing. And I want to see the, the, the a, a sort of like a, a phase two or part two of this movie, the continuance of where we are now. You know? And it's great that you um, our next question, which is coming from a viewer um, on our live feed, um, Esther Semiatu would like to ask, what was the biggest challenge yet as a lady globally and PI community-wise? Um, what would you like to see more support of? Sorry, you got cut off over there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'm just going to submit a question from one of our live viewers. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, um, so Esther Semiatu would like to ask you, uh, what was the biggest challenge yet as a lady globally um, and the PI community-wise, um, and what would you like to see more, more support of? I think my biggest challenge was insecurity. I was being insecure in my, you know, I was so insecure of thinking that I won't be able to make it because not because of my background or anything of or my sexuality or my sexual orientation. I think my biggest challenge was being able to face the world, mm. you know, and stand and be able to speak and talk about my issues globally, nationally, regionally, and internationally, you know, and having the guts to face the opposition, especially when they know for sure, when they know very well that I'm a school dropout person, that I'm a street learner, you know, and it's so hard when you sit there, you know, among PhDs and masters and doctors and you know, all those people. And when you sit, and especially when you reach to a certain level of sitting inside the UN mm-hmm. in, in Geneva and speak to all these leaders, you know, you feel so little when you're 
amount. It's it's like putting you in the den, you know, in the wolf, in the lion's den. You speak to these people, and you know, and if they don't like you, they'll shut you up. You know, and then let alone they only give you two minutes to put your recommendation in. And how on earth would you cover the whole bloody Pacific in two minutes? You know. <laughs> That was one of my biggest challenge, you know, and um, I think for I, what I would do or what I would like to see that we should be proud of ourselves. You know, I want to see our young ones learn and see what was, was, was achieved. That they have a voice, they have a right to actually voice their concerns, their issues, you know, because at the end of the day, it's their life, for goodness sake, mm -hmm. you know, that they have to look after. We won't be a, a there forever, you know. The young ones need to step up and learn, but do things in a very classy way, in a very uh, appropriate way of doing things, not Sitting, standing there with your mini dress and full drag, whatever, and you know, they you little, you know, all those little. No, you you can do it in a way that you still, at the end of the of, of what you're trying to talk about, um, that you still are respected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, and that's why I I, I actually enjoy. The, the talent of having to do a, a talent or methodology is telling your story without concealment, but telling yeah, the truth and nothing but the right. truth. Absolutely. And it's all about, I think people take for granted the power of their lived experience, um, you know, that it sometimes trumps anyone's educational experience, no matter how how far you would go to achieve that. But then, you know, I think a lived experience can also have its added value. And we have to sort of work to place individuals like Fafa, Fe Fafa Finis and Leithis, other different types of queer and transgender Pacific Islanders in roles of leadership that, you know, others can look and identify themselves um, to be able to say that, oh, I can aspire to do something like that too. And there's mm. power around that. Um, but that's a great response. And thank you for the question, Esther. Um, our next question we have is uh, from an anonymous source. Um, this person would like to know, what do you feel has changed for the best and for the worst among the Leiti communities in Tonga? Um. <clears throat> See, uh, for me, I never see the word. I never like to see the word, you know, you, but you can't hide it, you know. Um, but for the best, I, the what I have seen now that has changed is the ability of ladies to, to start getting um, starting their own businesses, starting their own lives, and being proud of themselves. And their vision, you know, they're very uh, visible in everywhere you, you look, you know. Um, but at the same time, I, I, we, what we teach in our association is actually, in every time we have our retreats and that, we keep repeating ourselves like broken records, you know. Um, we, we, we keep repeating ourselves that in order, I mean, in Tonga, we have the four pillars, you know, uh, humility, love, um, respect, and um, Oh, and something else I can't remember what it is, but um, 
But in order for that, we keep repeating, in order for you to be, have to have as a, as a trans person or LAD or LGBTI, um, you have to make sure that you live within these pillars, mm. you know? Want to be respected? You have to respect our culture no matter what. Until mm. you step out of this country and live overseas in America or wherever, then you do whatever you want. You know, but when you are in our country, in in this in the country of such as Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, and and I say the same thing when we have our regional get together. You know, and it, you know, dress yourself. You want to be a woman, dress like a woman, properly. You know, <laughs> um, don't be a street walker when you walk to church. No, there's no such thing as that. You know. Because I walked into my church when I was 14 years old in a pleated dress, a proper woman's dress, not in a mini skirt, you know? And that was the talk of the town that day. Mm -hmm. That was like, <laughs> right. I'm um, interested to show that there's time and place for anything, all for, there's a time and place for, is it anything or everything? Everything. everything. Um, those are, those are great values to live by for the Leiti community that you put them to that standard because it's sort of something that Fafafinas um, uh, sort of encourage each other to live by also from a cultural perspective lens. Um, so I think that's very important to know for those of you at home, you know. <laughs> no, because, and not only that, but uh, I mean, I think if there's the worst that I could see is for them to be rebellious against their family, mm -hmm. you know, because you deal with these, um, because for the past 30 plus years, we've dealt with so many issues, you know, and the, those people that come and live with your, in, you know, you have gone in your association or a drop-in center, you have lived with it yourself. You've gone through that, you know, those problems, those issues yourself. And then you have to deal with others every single day. You know, you have, even when we started the Tony Seas Association, we went apart. There was like, we, we split it in two. You know, we had frictions within our own community because they thought that, you know, some thought that this association should just get the money, party, that's it, nothing else, you know, but they didn't think of what the future of the association was and what the principles of the association and how it was supposed, uh, how it started and why it was started, you know? And, but we, we did, it didn't stop us from working, from continuing, you know? And then and we all came back together as one, you know? But it takes a lot of love, a lot of patience. Um, I, I think it's <laughs> a, a lot of prayers, a lot mm -hmm. of prayers. You know, um, uh, and I think if I if I had to try and and go against everybody, you know, I think I'll have wrinkles somewhere I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you age faster than you really are. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you mentioned that because our next question actually um, submitted by Monica Lapa. Um, she would like to know, do you think the film helped the island of Tonga be more understanding of the Leitis? Um, and what were some of the positive things that came out of the film for Tonga or the people of Tonga in general? I think um, I think it has changed. Firstly, it, it actually changed some of our opposition, 
Mm. You know, like, um, like Pastor Barry Taukolo, you know, um, he's no longer our enemy. He's our ally. He's, he, you know, we, we still, you know, we talk freely with him now and he comes and attends his, you know, our, our, and gives gospel, um, still giving his gospel, um, verses and, and, um, and, and, you know, trying to, um, be a bit more accepting instead of, you know, what he was in the film, you know, and, um, and a lot of, of uh, and another thing is it has brought a lot of the main church leaders to work with us closely. Okay. And I think they, uh, for the general public, I wasn't really worried about that. You know, it's the main decision makers, the faith leaders that we were targeting because they're the influence people. They're the preacher of every single Sunday, even when they go and sleep at church, but they listen to them. They're the ones who give them what to do, the guidance to do this. You do that, you know. Um, but I, I, I see, um, I see a lot of acceptance, you know, and um, and being able, the first of all, and being able to for the film to be accepted to be filmed publicly on TV, you know. Um, and Digicel, where I have to thank Digicel Tonga Company. For accepting, you know, the the to, and offering to to film the film on TV, I think about three times now. Three, we didn't have to pay for anything, you know. Wow. And, um, I think it's a positive thing to do. Well, that just goes. I mean, it's great that you know the film has allowed people, especially in Tonga, to sort of open up their minds, open up their hearts, and to sort of see the layers that lie underneath the Leiti's identity. Um, and that, you know, the essence and the importance of who they are is brought to light through this documentary, which is, I think, the biggest takeaway that I've um, experienced, you know, just watching this film. Um, but it's great to see that opposite, those who were uh, on the opposing side are slowly but surely, you know, coming around and hopefully that that continues to go on um, while you guys are continuing to do the work there um, in Tonga. Um, I'll jump to our next question. Get, we're getting a lot of questions coming in. <laughs> um, and this question is submitted by Leafa Warwick. Um, this person would like to know, Joey, how has that Tongan pastor, the one who wanted to arrest you, um, and behave towards you now, and behave towards you now? Sorry, let me read that again. Joey, how, yeah, yeah. Or how does that pastor behave towards you now? Yeah, that's, that's the one I sp spoke about earlier, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, um, there is no longer an enemy, you know. Um, he still teaches, uh, and he wants to. He wants to change people, you know. Um, and uh, even one of the churches that went that stood in one of our Pacific Regional Conference in, with a banner saying "Get out of the," you know, mm -hmm. uh, blah blah blah. Um, they're they're even. Doing therapy, changing ther therapy, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> um, but he has come around a bit more accepting now than, than what he was before, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. Not only him, but he's changed a lot of attitude of other leaders too, you know. Um, and every every time we have, it shows during um, in every single consultation that we have, um, it 
brings when we send out invitations to leaders, especially parliamentarians. You know, um, even our prime minister attended our our last con consultation mm -hmm. before I left Tonga for the Solomon Islands. Yeah, so it's we we there's a lot of good things that has come out of it. That's fantastic. I mean, I one way that both communities can work together or one thing that I would wish for it is to find the common ground where, you know, no matter how you choose to worship, how you choose to live your life, how you choose to carry out the truth of yourself when you're going out into society, that there should be a happy medium for everyone and anyone to sort of live harmoniously with each other. Um, so that's great that that pastor is sort of, you know, changing his perspective. Um, I'd like to jump, I think this is probably um, our last two questions, a couple more. Uh, one, our next question is submitted by Manmalo Ali Lima. Um, Lima. Ali Lima, yes. Ali Lima, Ali Lima. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question is, what do you envision the Lathes Association 25 years from now? What legacy do you want to leave and be known for in your life? That's a great question. Legacy? I don't want to be known for anything. <laughs> I think you're, you're already well known with the royal family and then Tonga all over. But you say, what would you say, um, the, the 25 years from now, how do you envision the Lathe Association? Um, I would like to see the, 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 the Lathe Association as an ally, a good ally, and known make, for making decisions. You know, in, within the government, that they are noticed and recognized for their ability, you know, to do things differently, you know, um, not just in cooking and decorating and making bouquets of flowers and all that, you know, but the ability to run and lead things in the government, you know, in, um, and I would like to see. Um, house representatives, ladies, you know, that are house representatives or uh, uh, parliamentarians. And I would like to see them as leaders, you know, part of the decision makers back at home, you know, in the next century. You know, by then I think we'll be six foot down on the ground. But, um, I would, I would really like to see that on the, you know, for the, for the members to, to be great leaders in the future, and um, and for the association and the drop-in center to be one of the main, you know, recognized association in the, in the kingdom, and um, yeah, but for me myself. A humble person, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you guys are on the right track to be able to getting that, um, getting all of your wishes for for the Lathe Association to come true, um, especially with you know you continuing to give out the scholarships and having that education piece tied into not just the ladies, but you're also giving it out to cisgender people who are looking for better educational opportunities. I mean, this is definitely one of the um, building blocks to sort of gain that success. Um, so fingers crossed, I hope everything comes to fruition um, with respect to that vision. Um, okay, our last question, I wanna be wary of time. Um, this question is submitted by Donato Fatuesi, um, who said, who would like to know, in hindsight, what was your most mean meaningful experience about speaking at the UN? 
Ah. Oh, the frightful. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um in hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. In hindsight. Okay. Um I think but the, the best moment was being able to even enter, you know, the premises, you know, and um, for, I mean, now you just walk in and it feels like nothing now, but mm -hmm. for the first time, not knowing what to do and where to, when to speak and what are the restrictions and, you know, and especially when you're not a government representative and you're from an NGO, there's only certain limits of permission for you to speak and where to sit. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I think that my, my, my highest point was being able to lobby, to reach out to leaders within our Pacific region in lobbying, you know, being able to, 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 to talk. Mm -hmm. and getting their blessings and getting their votes for a lot of the things that um, issues that we were lobbying for you know in some of our countries and especially when you know because I I, I, I don't only work for for um, for the Tongue Lake Association I'm also a representative of the Pacific Sexual Gender Diversity Network you know, and um, I have about 14 eight to 18 countries that I represent and mm -hmm. to put their voices, you know. And out of that, since we started the PSGDN in 2007, we have been able to decriminalize 11 countries. Decriminalize the homosexuality law in, seven, in 11 countries. We have eight, um, seven more to go, mm. you know, and um, we're crossing our fingers that in the next five years we'll be able to get it down to, from that seven to three, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, and that was one of the, the reasons why I went to, I was in, in the Solomon Islands, because in the Solomon Islands there's, um, there's no talk at all on LGBTI issues. Even their mandate or, or um, working plan of their Ministry of Internal Affairs, which was is supposed to be the ministry that covers every single person in a country. You know, there's no such thing, there's no such MOU on their agenda. So the government do not talk at all about LGBT, you know. So that was the first. I was I was privileged enough to use, uh, use my connections and my family that actually lived there to mm -hmm. show the movie, the ladies in waiting, and to get people from different departments to come to the screening and a private screening and. Um, and be able to sit there and talk to them on how we can move forward with them. You know? And it's the hardest, one of the hardest countries that I've ever come across. And I think, God, I've left the country and I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's been murders, there's been, you know, so many yucky stories that comes from there. Mm -hmm. But I'm very pleased that, um, that we have moved forward with this. And hopefully it will that. But um, there's been an interest from their local TV to screen the movie. So we're, there, we're just waiting for that. But um, I think that would be my highest point in well, being able to, to talk to, you know, to a lot of 
regional leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I certainly hope that things change in respect in the you know with regards to those respective communities. I mean, it's difficult to sort of um, uplift a community of LGBT folks who are you know being oppressed by their governments and possibly even by their family members, their friends, and you know all they're re all they're trying to do is to live live their life the way that they want. But I mean, you have a community here with us that, you know, is also supportive of you and your work, especially with the Lady Association. So, I mean, this is one of those times where I think it's necessary for everyone to contribute to um, this cause, any cause really that will liberate a lot of the different, a lot of community members within those regions. That's right. Um, it's hard, you know, because you're just one person, mm -hmm. you know, among thousands of different people with different mentalities and all that, you know. But um, I think uh, it's the, the best thing is to, you know, pray and, um, you know, just ask God to guide you, you know, because you don't know. They might say that I'm not a holy person, but that's just between me and God, mm -hmm. you know? Amen. I, I <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. That's great. Um, but before we wrap up, um, I'd like to take this opportunity to sort of um, ask you what sort of statement or what would you like to leave um, anything that you want to share with our viewers today before we start to close out our program? Um, I, I'm all about love, you know? Um, and if you humble yourself and have a lot of uh, patience, but main main thing is a lot of love in your heart. And you do things with from your heart and from the heart and do things with love, you know, love will conquer all, you know, and um, it, you know, I think, I know we have gone through our ups and downs, we all have faults, you know, but um, with um, like my, the motto that I live with, every single day of my life that my grandmother was always teaching me is forgive is better than sacrifice mm -hmm. you know, it comes with love and, love and, support. and that's what i wanted to share with everyone can i get an amen in here <laughs> <laughs> well Pauline, um i'd like to thank you very much for joining us tonight um, for our Talanoan transaction program. Um, it was my pleasure um, having to share this opportunity to have to have a discussion with you. Um, I'm very fortunate to have met you. I hope to one day meet you in person. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. And I hope that you continue to um, change minds, change hearts, and change spirits with all of the work that you and the Late Theater Association are um, looking to accomplish out there in Tonga. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sweetie. Thank you, Tapasi. And thank you, Donato, for everything. And thank you for the invitation. I wish you all the best and stay safe. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Bye, Jolene. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, you've heard from the wonderful and amazing Joey Jolene Mataele. Thank you so much, sweetie and Joey, for that wonderful conversation. It was such a joy and pleasure just to uh, be here and just indulge in um, such inspiration. Uh, Joey, again, I want to thank you so much for all the hard work that you're doing back home um, for our lady sisters uh, fighting for equality. I want to give you um, a big hug virtually right now. Um, 
And um, I know that you mentioned that you don't want to be known for anything, but I truly believe that you've already established your legacy um, with all the great work that you're doing. And it's a legacy that not only inspires our folks in Tonga, but everyone across the, all queer and trans Pacific Islanders. So again, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. Um, I want to apologize again on behalf of our executive director and our team for um, our technical difficulties. I know that you experienced some lagging viewing our film, but we do hope that from whatever you were able to um, view and hear, that you find inspiration and hope from the stories and the resilience of our Leyte sisters. Um, who are just individuals like you and I and everyone else that are just trying to navigate life, live their lives just being who they are. And, um, you know, all of this while trying to embrace their culture and and embrace their faith in Christianity, um, all while trying to live their authentic selves. Um, I also want to thank the creators of the film and the producers. Thank you so much, Joe Wilson, um, for you know capturing uh, these moments that are so special to our community. These are stories that are relevant to our queer and trans Pacific Islanders communities and struggles that we can all relate to, no matter where we go on this planet. Um, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge that um, we are going through difficult times with the pandemic. Um, we understand that a lot of our communities have been impacted and uh, we hope that you are all staying safe um, and you know, we hope that you remain safe. Um, but also at the same time, please do not forget that you are in our thoughts and um, our hope is that we all come out of this pandemic in great health and with our dignities intact and that we can continue to build community in person. Um, with that said, I would like to announce that our Queer and Trans Pacific Islander Relief Fund for the month of May is currently still open. Um, and this fund is for queer and trans Pacific Islanders living in the state of Washington. So if you are Leiti, if you are Fafafine, if you are Mahu, and all um, of our queer and trans beautiful Pacific Islander identities, please, this fund is for you and apply. We will continue to offer these services um, and these assistances until we exhaust our capability and our capacity to help you. Um, Let's see, what else did I, do I need to thank tonight? <laughs> um, I'd like to encourage everyone to keep following our social media page. Uh, that is where we will be posting updates with our COVID-19 response uh, resources and our assist assistances, but also to keep an eye out for our upcoming events like tonight's wonderful and exciting events uh, because we want to continue building community with you. We want to continue engaging with you, even if we have to stay at home and stay self-isolated. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors one again, our gracious and generous sponsors who make this work possible for Utopia Seattle, Seattle Foundation, Neighbor to Neighbor, Social Justice Fund, King County, Borealis Philanthropy, Group Health Foundation, Fund for Transgenerations, Third Wave Fund, Sex Workers Giving Circle, Pride Foundation, Seattle People's Fund, Prison Foundation, Can't Give Me Culture. I'd also like to take this time to thank our wonderful team. Um, and then I'd also like to thank our team at Utopia for making sure that tonight is our uh, event is a go. Um, I appreciate all your hard work. And then last but not least, I want to thank all of you. The most important part of the work that we do, our community, uh, for tuning in, for participating in our conversations, and most importantly, just engaging in building community with us virtually. Uh, we could not do this work without you, and it's important for us that we keep um, providing you with opportunities to stay engaged with us during this pandemic. Uh, 
Uh, with that said, I want to encourage everyone, if you please, please, if you have not filled out your census, do so. The census is so important because that's the only way where the federal government will see that we exist and that we continue to get our funding and programs allocated out to whatever areas of the United States that you live in. So please, if you are not counted, you are not getting those services. And that's one, you know, that's one less person um, to give money to you. Um, also, don't forget to uh, register to vote. If you need help registering for um, voting, please reach out to Tweety Fatuesi at Utopia Seattle. She can help you with those. Um, with that said, I just want to leave everyone tonight with, um, you know, a warm um, and um, comforting uh, thoughts from Utopia. Uh, please know that we are, we see you through this pandemic and we understand how we are all impacted through this. Um, and that we are here for you. If there's any way we can support you, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, with that said, um, so fa soy fua. I hope you all enjoy your evening. <laughs>